collecting and using information is vital to improve herd performance. It will reveal which animals are the most fertile and productive and identify those which aren't earning their keep. It also allows you to identify problem cows or areas which need addressing. This can be done simply through using a notebook such as the BRP herd notebook or using more sophisticated technology such as EID. Well, we run a flying herd replacement policy buying in Hereford Cross Frisian cattle. Uh, they're all coming out of live markets. So we routinely vaccinate now for BVD because we have had that in the herd in the past. Mm. So the replacement heifers have two jabs when they come in a month apart and then an annual booster jab after calving before bulling the following year. Right. Um, but that at the moment is our only vaccination policy that we have. Okay, are you doing any testing for any other we diseases? Haven't, no, we haven't tested for IBR or lepto or yonis or anything like that. Okay. Hopefully we haven't got a problem. I mean, as far as lepto is concerned, the main thing would probably be cows that are coming over quite a bit. They're not holding as well as they should be. You may see some abortions, but generally it's just an infertility type thing. So they're just not doing quite as well as they should be. Um, that, down that sort of line. IBR, you're probably more likely actually to see it in sort of these stock in here, your younger stock, where you're more likely to see pneumonia problems and that side of things. But if you've got it circulating in the farm, you'll then end up with, you could potentially end up with infertility and abortions again in your cattle. So they're two to be looking at and they may be ones that it may be worth sampling a few cows each year just to make sure that it's not circulating. Yeah. Um, probably the best bet is to be testing um, the heifers as you bring them in. Yeah. As far as breeding bulls are concerned, do you uh, vaccinate them for anything? How often do you buy them in? Where do they come from? Uh, our bulls are all bought direct from farm. Uh, we don't buy at the sales, so okay. we're buying from a known source. Um, they are accredited as being disease free when they come in but we do vaccinate for BVD as well so they are covered. Protected. Uh, yeah. We don't addition, uh, vaccinate for anything else apart from BVD. I think the same probably comes back to what we said about the heifers and the cows as well just um, if you started to get a problem then you would start to protecting your bulls but if they're coming from a known source where you know that there isn't a problem on those herds um, then that's lower risk so that's better for you. The best thing to do is make sure you see proof of that they've done testing to prove that they're clear as well. Do you have a health plan? Do you do a health plan with your vet at all? When you uh, we haven't sat down and done one with the vets. We've got the health plan that's required for farm assurance. Okay. Um, so we've got a regular worming policy, we've got the vaccination policy for BVD. Um, we haven't got a health plan as such beyond that. Okay and do you look at that? Do you review it annually? Or? Yes, yeah we have done. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I always find quite often these things can just end up being a pile of paper that nobody ever looks at and it needs to be something that's an active document, I think. So it's something that you need to be discussing with everybody that's on the farm, anybody that's working with you to try and get the best out of it. So as far as health plan is concerned, like you say, having the vaccine protocol, having a worming protocol, um, having a quarantine or isolation information in there, um, and all the bits that cover for your farm insurance will cover practically, but it's making it a practical document that you are using so, and managing it each time. Okay, so when we're looking at fertility, there's uh, various things that can have an impact on fertility uh, in the herd. So when we're looking at health planning and looking at where we want to be, we've got to look at all the diseases that might have an impact, as well as the management of the cattle and what age we're trying to carve the cattle down, where, when we're trying to carve them and the systems on farm. Um, and that's where your health plan comes in because you can sit down and plan ahead but you also need it to be an active document so that you can be looking at all the different diseases that might be having an impact and you know where you want to be testing and where you, where you are going to be vaccinating and make sure everything's in place so that you're not hit with any horrid surprises later on in the year. Okay, if you want to set up a health plan, it, it is something that you can do off your own back if you've got an idea of what needs to be involved in there, but it's worth speaking to your vet and other advisors that might be helping you on the farm to make sure that you get um, the best advice and the most complete health plan that's, uh, that you required. So the best option is probably to speak to your vet and see what systems they're using, and then you can actually go through each category and pull into the advice that you need for each section. So fertility is a key driver of suckler output and profitability. Optimising it requires attention to detail in all aspects of herd management. The eBlex Suckler Records for Better Returns sheet provides a list of key performance indicators for producers to monitor herd performance, compare data year on year and with other herds. This is available from the eBlex website.